Seriously, that's Very for exciting. sure. All right, Amanda Delgado, you've had your eye on her. She's the transfer out of Northridge. She'll mind the nets for this LMU bunch. And you talked about, you know, LMU coming in unbeaten. You know, Amanda Delgado is an interesting story. A transfer from CSUN. She's got one year of eligibility left, and she decides to transfer over to LMU to help Chris Shamides start his rebuild here for the Lions. Was uh, a great player for CSUN. Had 2.35 goals against average last year, but this year she comes in three goals against five shutouts so far this year and helped stop LMU's 19-game losing streak that they had been on uh, the prior seasons. You mentioned Coach Shamadis, first year as head coach LMU, already turning this program in a positive direction. It's a really interesting story. They hired him uh, in December of 2021 from a men's program, the Division II Cal State LA men's program, which he literally just led them to a national championship. So it's very rare that you get somebody leave a national championships program. But man, he spent 18 seasons as the men's head coach there, included nine seasons uh, on the women's side and is the all-time winningest coach in both programs history, turned both programs around from losing seasons into winners. And uh, this will be a very interesting rebuild for him. Just a great hire. All right, over to the pilots, 11 different goal scorers on this nationally ranked team. Nettia Sawan leading the way with four goals. No surprise there. It's been great to see her back in the starting lineup. She was named to the WCC preseason team. You know, she uh, was really reeled off one goal in three straight games, starting with Seattle U. That was the game that she returned back to the starting lineup. One goal, they win 1-0 uh, against Seattle U and then scored successively against the two Pac-12 teams um, in those 1-1 one -one draws with them. So it's been great to see her back in the starting lineup and Portland will need her to be firing on all cylinders. Michelle French, as they say, coaching her socks off. A young club, <laughs> injuries popping up, and yet, and yet, she's got her team in great shape heading into conference play. And giving some great advice to those young players there, I'm sure, and, you know, can't really do any better than what she has done in her fifth year so far. Unbeaten, back in the top 20 rankings. They've scored 18 goals. They've only conceded five times. I mean, they had this team is really confident in riding high headed into WCC play. All right, settle in for a good one here at Merlo. Two undefeated teams meeting in their WCC conference openers. I love it. Lineups, kickoff coming up next from Merlo. Stick around. This is going to be a treat. Welcome back to Merlot Field, home of the 18th ranked Portland Pilots. And tonight, those Pilots will host LMU in the WCC opener for both clubs in women's soccer action. Visiting Lions come in at 2 0 and 6 undefeated. This is a club that will hunker down defensively. They don't score a lot, but by golly, they don't give up a lot of goals either. So Chris Shamides, we talked about him in his first year, has a starting lineup that can get forward on occasion when the opportunity presents itself, but it's the defenders in front of Delgado, Angela, that really just I, get the job done and Santon has been playing a ton of minutes and she's got a ton of minutes in Watkins those two will really nail it down and it, you really have to when you're starting a rebuild like Shamides is on with this Lions program it starts with defending that's the very least you can do coming in is try to get the ship right by stopping the goals going in the back of the net so the 6-0 and 4 pilots ranked number 18th in the country behind the bossing of Michelle French on the sidelines. Norris in goal, as you would expect. 
really good back line, but it'll be interesting to see what Roe and Sawan, Lucina, Togiai, Doctor, what they can do against this LMU defense. It's a really technical uh, attacking lineup. You got MJ Rowe, who's going to be, uh, got the get crucial goal last week against Utah Valley, and um, you're going to have Doctor, Togiai, and Yako pulling the strings in the middle, but Lucina and Rowe are going to be the very interesting uh, pieces out wide. I think it's Lucina that's going to be out wide tonight, um, but they're going to have to be the ones that try to break down and get through that LMU back line, and it's going to be down to Togiai to see if she can find those channels into their feet so that they can get at this uh, this LMU goal. So let's update folks on the injury front as far as the pilots are, are concerned. No Sophia Matice. She is out with that foot injury. It's it's not, there was the MRI strain result in terms of the testing. She'll be back, but not tonight. Doesn't look like Adams will be able to go either. as She's been injured, Kayla Adams. But Brooke Miller, who's missed the last few games, is dressed. She might be able to go tonight. And that's a great sign in this Portland lineup. Brooke Miller had been, you know, one of the first, if not the first players off the bench for Michelle French through the opening uh, games of the season and then took that injury, just, just kind of got uh, into a bad tackle. And, and But really, really glad to see that it wasn't a season-ending injury. And this is going to be a critical piece for uh, head coach Michelle French to pick up for her team coming into WCC play the pilots in their white jerseys gray shorts white socks kicks kicks things off here against lmu in their road kits red stem to stern underway here at merlot field gorgeous night for soccer winds have totally died down temperature high 70s just perfect the pilots coming off a hard-fought victory over a very good Utah Valley team, 2-1. to one, While LMU tied UC San Diego one apiece. Lots of ties for this LMU club. But considering what they've gone through the last few years, I mean, just last year alone, 0-19, finishing dead last. And, you know, Ange, when they defeated Northridge at the end of August this year, it was their first win since defeating the University of Portland 2-1 to one in overtime in February of 2021. Unbelievable. And, and it's just been so remarkable to see. And, and you know, Shemidias was brought in to do this very thing, turn this program around. Uh, I talked in the open about, you know, how well he did at Cal State LA, LA for both the men's and the women's programs. And, you know, that is his task. And it's so exciting to see, you know, the the schools in the West Coast Conference bringing in some really ambitious hires and really trying to turn this conference into the powerhouse that I think anybody that watches it knows it can be. It'll be interesting to see if the pilots can crack the code as far as this Lion defense is concerned. This is an LMU club that has scored five goals all season, have only given up three. And you know when you're when you're chasing things down again, as I said, you're really the the key thing that you can get right right off the bat when you come into the program is how you want your team to defend. That's a very um, critical thing that you need to address straight off uh, straight off the mark. But it's also an easier thing to teach, and it's an easier thing to get people on the same page than it is to find your attacking channels to, and to find the critical link-ups that will lead you to goals. Whoa, that was a heck of a ball. Nothing called, quick restart. I mean, that was a tightrope service from Ash, and it was a beauty. You know, Ange, back to Shamides, it's interesting because he basically echoes that exact same thing. You know, they're on the same page and collecting on the same page defensively. You know, we'll, we'll choose our moments to get forward, but right now, it's our first fall together. We've got a way to go offensively, so we'll just play the great D. And, and that's how you, you know, you keep your team confident and together right now it, it doesn't matter much that they're not scoring goals or they're not collecting wins right now what matters is that they're playing a really tight cohesive defensive line and that keeps the players motivated it keeps them going into because they know that the, they know that the goals they'll come they know that they're going to continue to work on their attack and and work on building things um, but they just got to keep it right at the back groves clever there she leads the club with the two goals nice run by Groves, the transfer out of the University of Texas. So an interesting situation and a good one if you're an LMU fan. Right outside the 18, and it looks like Marshall may take this free kick. 
Portland Pilots ranked number 18 in the country. Riding the unbeaten streak, it's all on the line tonight. Dangerous ball, Norris. Oh, baby, still up for grabs. Anybody's ball. And the Pilots dangerously try to clear it, but that was a mess near Norris and the six-yard box. Yeah, not quite sure what happened there. Doctor, I think, was the one that came out and cleared it. Maybe Yakel and Portland just didn't pick up that second ball well beyond the 18, allowing the Lions to serve it back in. Norris gets caught. Portland doesn't clear the penalty area quick enough, and the Lions were allowed to pressure Norris, creating that moment of, you know, indecisiveness between uh, Norris and her backs. You just see numbers pressing high defensively for this LMU club. Maybe right for the counters. Here's Rowe. She's going to wait for help. Pilots would love a fast start. Beautiful service inside. Sawan was the target, but LMU had a different idea. Not able to clear, clear though. And the Pilots still in their attacking third. Switching fields. Sawan will carry. Wants to twist and turn Groves. And now the double comes. And you can see the discipline of LMU defending in that back five when they are back in their in their defensive third, they're coming back. Daddy Swan's checking off of Groves to come get that ball, but Portland, if they're going to break down this LMU lineup, will need to get some more help from their outside backs in Norman and Ash so that Swan doesn't have to check deep. She can stay high in that LMU defensive line and allow Ash and Norman to come up and provide that service and the threat from, uh, from deeper. And on cue, that was Ash who Tried to get something on the cross, but a little deep on the touch. We're at Merlot Field, home of the Portland Pilots, number 18 in the country. Last year, the Pilots defeated LMU one to nothing. That was in LA. Sawan with the game winner in the 64th minute. But the last five games have really mirrored those close scores. Portland has come away with the advantage, 3-1-1, one, and one, but four one-goal games and one tie in the last five matches between these two clubs. And there's something about, you know, the program. Sometimes I, I remember, you know, there's that one team that you face that no matter what will always come at you and even though you might be the, the number five team in the country you're going to struggle against them just because of the name on their jersey it's just there's some mental block that um, that makes it difficult and, and sometimes it's you know because you're a, that, that top team the team that you're playing against is always going to bring their best game against you. LMU certainly seems to do that against uh, these pilots and, and that was the message from Frenchie to the troops hey, these guys play us tough every year do not look at records, do not look at what they did last year. This is a brand new team. Marshall. And there's Santon out of Sweden. She's played every minute. Watkins has played every minute. Lovely, lovely touch from Adams bringing that down. Good distribution finding Yakel, but Yakel needs to find something a bit cleaner there. Not that long, hopeful ball. If you're going to break down a back five, it's not going to be Kaylee Togia going one on three there. Such a compact defense for LMU, and it's really tough to get behind the defense. They'll press, and then they'll just park it as well. Ash hustling. So a throw for LMU, scoreless here in the eighth minute, ninth minute make it. This will be a patient 
LMU club. They're not looking for any high scoring affair. They'll just take their time on both ends of the field. Ooh, far post. You love that from Warner. Nobody was there for any kind of redirect header, but it was a beautiful ball. She had her opportunity and just caught Camille Ash. Very rare to do to catch Camille Ash out like that. Wow. But has a really good look at it. And, and yeah, LMU, not a, a super high scoring team, but they can get a goal and sit in to defend. Yep. They've, they've proven that they can do that. The energy level from the pilots will need to pick up, Ange. They'll need to start combining. They'll need to start feeding off somebody's en energy that is able to create it because they seem a little flat right now. And does don't know if it's just the one game. I mean, I think this is the second or third straight weekend that they've had the one game, so there's not a lot to get up for. Um, but, you know, the opening game of, of the WCC, you're coming in as the number 18 team in the country and, and unbeaten against yep. the only other unbeaten team in your conference. Thus far, yeah, I agree. You have to come in with a bit more uh, attitude and a bit more confidence and, and energy. You know, Frenchie's the first one to say, hey, if we don't perform, before, perform well in conference, Basically, all these great things we've done mm -hmm. up until conference is is kind of smoke and mirrors. It's irrelevant. Yeah, you know they they will have a, a good RPI coming out of non-conference play, but they have to put the results together in the WCC in order to have any hope if they're not going to win the WCC outright in order to get an at-large bid. Speaking of RPI. Portland's very healthy at number 15. That's the best in the WCC. BYU's at number 20. Pepperdine at 38. Santa Clara at 69. But Portland's RPI, 15. Boy, that's very impressive. And it's interesting, you know, they've gotten four draws against the Pac-12 teams that um, were in their non-conference schedule. But, you know, big wins against Nebraska, Hawaii, Seattle, you other, other programs that Utah Valley is another yes. big one that have big results going for them. So that's really what's helping lift Portland's RPI and will help them uh, come selection time. So, Ange, if I throw LMU's RPI at you at 127, do you still consider this an important RPI game? For LMU, it is absolutely. Sure, sure. You know, if they can get a result here, that is a huge boost for them to to take something off the team that's number 15 in the RBI. For Portland, it would be a disaster. Correct. Okay, and and the committee looks. You know, folks, the committee really. If, if Portland's not able to win the outright championship, the committee looks at good wins, but they look at bad losses as well. Correct, Absolutely. Ange? Absolutely. And we'd love to welcome all the viewers who just finished watching Pacific Lutheran and George Fox. Big football game between those Northwest rivals. We're at Merlot Field. Ann Schatz and Angela Harrison, delighted to have you with us. 18th ranked Portland hosting LMU. It's the WCC conference opener for both clubs. We're early in this one. You haven't missed a thing. 12th minute, scoreless. It's always nice to go, football to football. Why not? We got the proper football going here, just Angela a, Harrison. Just a different shape of the ball. Yep. And again, this, is, this, this pace is exactly what LMU wants. They'll spread. They'll use width. They'll knock it around. They'll possess. Just keep the score low. Pilots haven't been able to click and combine to get anything on frame against Delgado. Ash does a good job reading that deep ball. Now we're talking Togiai inside the 18, doesn't have a, any help. Here comes a runner, one touch, not quite. Togiai is gonna try and get it right back. Sawan really wanted that ball just off the 18. Didn't get it, and here comes LMU. And that's an opportunity Michelle French will talk about in terms of making the most of your opportunities. Can you find a head? Can you find a foot? Find the runner. Don't just turn and lump it into the box in there. Um, make the most of your opportunity when you're in that area of the field. Ash. Another tightrope service. Sawan shreds the defender. Sawan inside the 18. 
Left foot blocked. Sawan doesn't quit. LMU clears. Offensively, are you patient if you're Portland and try to read this defense, figure out the rhythm, figure out exactly what they're doing, who's dropping, who's filling? What are you doing here offensively, Ange? Everything exactly as you just said it. I mean, and we've seen this from Portland, you know, when they uh, went down a goal against Oregon. No reason to panic, nothing here um, that they need to try to rush things for. You're just probing. You're trying to find okay. some of those opportunities. You're just looking for any areas where you can get in and, and find the soft spots. And you may not be successful, but, you know, you try again, you fail again, and you fail better next time ah. uh, with, with how you go into it. Because every, every time down the field is an opportunity to learn something new and, and learn where the vul vulnerabilities are for uh, this back line. So it's a bit of a chess match, no doubt about it. You know, and you, you got to you got to admire LMU. They're not trying to be something they're not. You know, they they come in, they they know exactly right now that they need low scoring games in order to get results. They don't try to be anything other than grinders, blue collar, outwork you, maybe get a goal or two to surprise you. And in only one of their games this season was there more than one goal scored for either team, and that was their win 2-1 at, at UNLV. Excuse me. Everything else has been a 1-1 a one -one draw, a 1-0 win think one time, that. and then a 0-0 draw. Yeah, think, and that's just, you don't hear that very often, do you? N no. <laughs> I mean, you know, you want to score in, in soccer. It's it's sexy. It's what you do. And and, and this LMU bunch, like you said, they'll, they'll get there, but... You know, they, they're coming off, you know, almost a PTSD kind of a season when, you, when you're winless. It, it really is hard to uh, improve the psyche after that, and that's, you know, the biggest challenge I think that Shamity's faced when he came in and took hold of this program was trying to disrupt that mindset and disrupt that mentality, and I think that he was an extremely exciting hire, uh, hire and for um, any one of these players at this program is something you know, bring something new, bring something different, and that immediately will kind of break that psyche and break anybody out of a rut. Like the idea, Togiai on the run just wasn't able to collect it in time as the defender had the angle. And I just love what Frenchie has done slowly but surely in her fifth year here at the University of Portland getting all of her recruits in, establishing the type of play. You know, you know she's defense number one. I get it. <laughs> but those recruits that she can go after, they're all hers now, and that's a stamp on, on what kind of program she wants to run. And, and it's how you sustain a level that – uh, is manageable you know you can come in and you could start you know nicking players from here and there and start you know kind of running people out but it, it's such a high and low season after season if you're going to try to build something that's sustainable you have to be patient with the process and I think Michelle French has been incredibly patient with the process and we're starting to see that start to pay out uh, now you knew it was a great hire when Frenchie came back. Her first year was 2018. First winning season for the Pilots in five years. You just knew they were heading in the right direction. And it's been great to see. It was something that, you know, she wasn't really necessarily thinking of or on her radar. Um, and then, you know, just kind of the why not? You know, why, why not me? Why not now? You know, she said, gosh, I was at the best job in the world. <laughs> you know, I was working with the U.S. women's national team. It you is, know? but I think, you know, Michelle French is a natural coach. And when you're oh, yeah. when you're in with the national team and, and you are doing so much prep around every camp and, and every kind of game and opportunity that there isn't really an opportunity to coach and actually get involved um, with the players and – uh, on a regular, consistent basis, and I think that she missed that. She's such a good coach and, and, and connects so well with players um, on, a, on a personal level because it's some, a lot, oftentimes, especially at the college level, it's not just about the product on the field. It's about the person and, and the product and who you are off of it, and I think that she um, had missed that kind of that level of connection with players, and, and that was why it was just a really good fit and, and opportunity for her. Just a great point. Obviously, you know, multi-All-American 
Player of the Year finalist, just an absolute stud. It played with Ange here at the University of Portland. And it, it was, you know, you think, well, that's a gimme. That's I mean, that's a gimme hire. But she, didn't, she didn't play with me. I got to play with her. Oh, <laughs> all right. I stand corrected. Togiai taking everybody on. Togiai! Wow! Togiai loves that range. There is nothing that Togiai enjoys more than finding a little bit of space and then sticking one from just outside the penalty area. Look at this shot through so many defenders. I mean, that absolutely just nicked the inside oh. of that post. Maybe just just a little little breath as it goes by, but Kaylee Togiai can go high. That's what those LMU players were expecting is that high one that dips under the crossbar and she knows exactly what she needs to do and just hits a little a little driver right into that into that side pocket over there. That was two iron, huh? Yeah, yeah. right into the side pocket. Just a brilliant goal from Togiai. Third goal of the season for Togia, and you mentioned she had nothing but red in front of her. She had a wall of defenders, and she just squared those hips and needed a smidge of room. And, and I think that anybody that watches her and has watched her consistently knows she loves to shoot from there. She loves that, and she could have a player, three players wide open, but if she thinks she can take it, she'll take it. And sometimes it's not successful, but what I said a couple minutes ago, you come down, you find the vulnerabilities, you try again, you fail again, and you fail better. She's got three players in front of her, why not? She's going to take that opportunity and see what they do with it. And right there, they don't do much with it, and she's able to, to put the Portland Pilots up one nothing. Why not crack it? You're absolutely right. And giveaway. And into space. Watch out. LMU not quitting on the play. Instead, the counter. And in a hurry, Lucina. Togiai wants it again. Asked for it. Got it. She's got some runners outside the 18. She's going to leave it for Sawan. Great battle down in that near corner. That's for sure. It's not often that you see nope. Sawan bullied off the ball down there, but I think that was Marshall who, who did that, I think. Um, but great battle in there. Well, and they've well been battling. LMU. So make a note of that. It's actually Groves that's given Sawan fits. There's there's about five panes of glass between me and that angle. And your, your glare see. is killing you too. <laughs> but oh, what a night here in the Rose City. Gorgeous evening. Sun just setting that the temperatures are perfect for the players. Here's Togi laying it off to Sawan. Sawan has that little angle there, but decides to take it end line. And yeah, it's Groves coming in there. Again, not often that we see that for Sawan, but Groves so good at holding her angle and, and getting that ball out. Now again, not just kicking it to Sawan or Togiai, but finding her teammate up the field to get that ball out. Well, well played there from Groves. Groves that transfer from Texas, played a couple of years there, didn't score any goals, but has two to lead LMU, but not just a goal scorer. Obviously, playing the D against one of the best scorers in the WCC. So one to nothing, Togiai's brilliant goal, giving the Pilots the one nothing lead. That happened in the 19th minute. Now, Ange, the last thing the Pilots can do is say to themselves, well, this LMU team doesn't score a whole lot of goals, so one should hold up. You can't take that, uh, you know, kind of attack, if you will, against an LMU club that can surprise you. The, and they can surprise anybody. You know, I mean, you don't have this record. You're not unbeaten coming into conference play for no reason. You can get results. You can, you know, get get the result at the end of the day that you need. So you have to make sure uh, for Portland that you keep things right at the back. You know, we see Togi I come through with that goal uh, from outside the penalty area. And now that's something that, you know, these, this back line and, and these lines will be watching for. So now Portland will have to look for, for some better runs through the area because they'll be stepping up to to block those opportunities from distance. Earlier today in WCC women's play, Pepperdine shutting out San Diego 3-0. BYU, St. Mary's playing to a scoreless draw. Remember, no overtime in soccer this year. And Santa Clara shutting out Pacific 3-0.
BYU having a very uncharacteristic yeah. season for them. Just head, kind of head shaking, but it's one of those deals where you always expect them to get going. Sawan tries to reclaim that touch. Sawan gets it right back from Norman. Deep ball. First sub of the game. And look who's coming on the field. Angela Harrison, Brooke Miller. She has missed some games with the injury against Seattle. It was an ankle injury. She's been a spark off the bench. Great to have her back on the pitch. And I'm sure she is extremely relieved to be back on the pitch. She'll come on for Lucina, who'd been playing in that attacking midfield role, and she'll switch with Kaylee Togiai, sending Togiai back into the middle. And now Miller, who we've seen throughout the season, has such tremendous pace. Here's where I think you're going to see Portland start to kind of take advantage and try to look for some of these little uh, balls in behinds for Miller to run onto. She's so good at that. And look at their closing down right away. Um, so it'll be exciting for uh, everybody to see Brooke Miller uh, back in the lineup for Portland. One of the many youngsters on this club, there certainly are some veterans sprinkled in this UP lineup, but you know the future is really bright for the pilots with all of these underclassmen. I'm so excited for the recruits that Frenchie has coming in. The ones that came in this year, everybody that's come in. I mean, I know some I know of some players that are coming in in the coming years. I mean, this program is really going places. And, you know, it's because of of commitments from players like Brooke Miller to come play here. I'm, I've loved watching her play when she's come on the field. Um, she is going to do great things for this program. So back after missing a few with that ankle injury, Miller, the first sub speaks to the pilot's depth as they're missing some players with injuries. The latest, Matice, dealing with the foot injury. Interesting ball here. Ash is just going to work it. That tremendous decision making from Ash there. Just thought about kind of maybe putting him back in, but keeps possession for Portland to earn them a better opportunity. Twenty sixth minute one nothing pilots on Togi eyes goal in the 19th minute. It was a thing of beauty as she basically took on three defenders in terms of a little mini wall that was set up and Togi eye is able to clear those defenders and beat Delgado one nothing pilots. Doctor. Far sideline looking for the cross. Pilots now will use this near sideline. You see LMU dropping all their players back right now, all 11 players. Man. Probably within about 40 yards of their own goal line. You don't see this very often either. Not not all 11, do you? Uh, no, not not too common in the in the women's game. We've seen it in a couple men's games, but um, depending on the women's women's game, it's uh, it's not too common, no. Yeah, yeah, I mean, all 10 field players obviously joining Delgado in a very compact space. And this is where Portland has to exercise that patience. This opportunity right there from Miller, I love that, plays it all the way back. You're trying to draw LMU forward to press Shea Adams or Camille Adams here, create some space for Togiai, for Sawan, for Miller to check off that back line, get it, and then see if there's any pockets of space that open up behind them when they do that. So, Ange, if you're the pilots, how do you prepare in terms of practice? How do you prepare for an LMU type of club? I mean, you have a you have a really good uh, depth of of bench um, in 
Michelle French's squad, and so you you tell them this is how we think that they're going to line up. You know, I, I think that Logan Emery and Maite Zabala, uh, Michelle French's assistants, do an excellent job of scouting. Uh, they have watched LMU's games undoubtedly at this point. They know what to expect, and so you know they're going to go over this in the classroom. And it's not just watching video; it's just going to draw some things on the whiteboard and say, you know, when this player moves here, you're going to try to move there. This okay. is how we are going to try to play against a team that is going to play so compact against us. And then you know they might go out and just walk through it. They okay. might run a couple couple live balls from half field you know as this ball comes in here they might run just kind of this right here where they're going to start the ball from the center back at the halfway line and try to find some of those opportunities to play um, through a five back with with two or three players in front of those five I like you know your idea of utilizing all different ways to scout and prepare whether it's on the field in the classroom watching tape well, and that's, you know, again, every every player's critical. You know, the, the, the first player on the roster, the last player on the roster, yep. you have a critical role. And sometimes it's going to be to get your teammates ready to execute and help. And that's your way that you help your team win games. And sometimes it's going to be coming, uh, being a starter. Sometimes it's going to be the first or the fourth player off the bench who needs to come in and continue to uh, help your team succeed on the field. Warner. Edging towards the 18. Loses that touch. Wilson, nice job in there against Warner. Warner thought she had her going in there, but Wilson steps in just right there. And as it just kind of trickles out, Wilson gets just a little, the tiniest little piece of, of the ball as it goes through there. So, Ange, the Portland Pilots, the one and only school program in the entire country where both the men's and women's soccer teams are undefeated. The men did their thing last night and the women are leading LMU tonight 1-0. What a story that is. It's so great to see and, and you know there there are unbeaten teams on both sides of the men's and the women. We're playing against one right now. Uh, we're seeing one right now with uh, the LMU team and on the men's side you know we know that you know Wake Forest and, and the UW men are unbeaten but to have both programs at that level and uh, you know they are having so much fun with it you know the players going back and forth with each other and making you know fun little side bets on you know who's going to lose first or who's going to be the one that uh, that is the goal scorer tonight things like that you know they have a really good camaraderie back and forth with each other uh, that's really nice to see and they're so supportive of one, ad one another the coaching staffs are extremely supportive of one another and it's a really nice thing to see happening here in North Portland. I talked to to both Nick and Frenchie about you know the coaching relationship. Their offices are so close to each other. Get back to that in a second. And they're always texting each other, walking across the way to to have a word with each other. As Nick said, "Hey, I'm a girl dad, <laughs> you know, and I just love the fact that their women are doing what they're doing." We, we go to each other's games. We're supportive of each other. You, you just gotta love the vibe that's back on the bluff with both clubs as Thomas checks into the LMU lineup. Lone Char as well. Both clubs nationally ranked. The men in the top 10. The women coming in at 18. The RPI healthy on both sides. I mean, this is crunch time now that conference has started, Ange. It's a different beast. These teams know each other so well. They scout each other so well. Well, and, you know, when you play WCC teams and you know, you know, when you play BYU or Santa Clara or Pepperdine, you know, those coaches have been there. Um, sorry, Jerry, Tim, and Jennifer, but they've been there forever. <laughs> so you know what you're going to get when you're playing those teams. And that's why this is such an interesting game because LMU has had such a, that's a, this is a great save from, yeah, it is. or a great interception, not a save from Delgado. Well, great, interception, great yeah. yeah. Did she read that well or what? <laughs> very well very well to hold does very well to hold on to that there um but you know all of these teams know how they play and you know when jerry smith and tim ward and jen rock would look at uh portland they know michelle french's style not just from her having been here for four years at this point but from her being you know clive charles being your mentor you know she plays a lot you know of, of soccer similar to to how he set this program up so there's a lot of similarities and when you have um you know a coast uh christian uh, Shamides come into that is kind of a different entity where they're going to throw 
something different at these programs. Yes. You know, they really have to take another look at, at how these teams play and how they're set up. And it's just, as, again, as I said in the open, a really exciting time in the WCC. I think Shamity's was such a great, ambitious hire and really trying to push the WCC for women's soccer into a, a top-tier conference in the country. You know, the goal, obviously, is... You know, to get this league to a three or four bid scenario, obviously uh, two conference teams, you know, meeting in the College Cup semis last year. I mean, that was just nuts with BYU taking care of Santa Clara and then BYU losing in the final to Florida State. But you mentioned that the big dogs of the conference and, you know, the pilots would love to get back into the fray. They were there for so many years and it's time for them to get back. Well, and you see, you know, Portland wins their first national championship against Santa Clara. I mean, that's such a wild story and, and just a wild story line of just uh, the legacy of the WCC and, and just the competitiveness of, you know, Jerry Smith and Clive Charles of that, you know, the first national championship yeah. for the University of Portland comes against Santa Clara in Texas. That was that was just a, a, a wild time. Hannah McCord checking in along with Ruby Settle for the Pilots. Portland hasn't been to the NCAA tournament since 2013. If you're Frenchie and this bunch, you keep doing what you're doing. I'm not trying to get ahead of myself, but you keep taking care of business and that could change. That's the hope and, and you know, that's what, uh, you know, Portland Athletic Director Scott Lakeham hired her to do. You bet. Anna McCord in only her second appearance of the season. Christensen on the pitch for LMU. So both clubs using their subs. Ileana Wong. Miller wants to cut back. Miller. Ball knocked about. Pilots still collecting. Doctor. Doctor, Lucky. it's amazing, you know, through the opening games of, of non-conference play, Keely Doctor was all over the pitch in, in an attacking form, you know, used to calling her name, but, you know, with uh, Sophia Matice going to the bench with injury, Doctors had to go into a more of a defensive role, and it's been a credit to her and how steady she is of Big just, time. you know, not having to, to call her name out that much because she's just so steady, did not even blink or miss a, miss a moment moving from that, attacking role into a more defensive one. Frenchie was really high on Dr. and Yakel being those great step in different role kind of players with Matthijs gone for a while with that injury. Two of the more technical players on this pilot squad. Yakel and Doctor. So they'll make their presence felt, that's for sure. Thirty seventh minute. Wilson does a good job retrieving and keeping the ball in play. LMU's now shifted into a bit more of a press. Three players going after that ball against Portland's back line have shifted an additional player into the into the attack and now are looking to see if they can get this equalizer against Portland. As a result, um, um, Portland has now shifted their formation of playing a little bit four across a line in the middle, but um, it's going to be interesting to see how this final 10 minutes of the first half plays out with just those slight adjustments in formation. Doctor recovers and will get whistled, huh, for that foul. Curse the commentator. <laughs> One nothing. Pilots with the lead. Togiai's goal in the 19th minute, the difference at the moment. Santon and LMU looking for the equalizer. Get back in this thing and just kind of change the pace and momentum. Here's Santon. 
exit, but right at Norris, no problem. No problems there for Norris. As you said, even with the difficult shot, she has no problem hanging on to that. That's a good one for her to read. Just slide over to make the catch. Miller did a good job of evading the first defender, but then lost the touch, so it'll be an LMU throw. You see a large portion of the men's team right there. Having a few words for the LMU thrower. <laughs> Here's our there they are. Men's, hey, fellas. Men's soccer program. Congrats on that big win last night. Keep that unbeaten record going. Keep climbing the rankings. Ooh, dangerous there. Nothing called. Wow. Wong is going to get up slowly. Long couldn't run onto that one. Bit too much there off the foot of Doctor, but it's a, it's the right idea. Again, Portland looking for some of those areas that are just in behind the back line. Just have to angle them out a little bit more. Don't make it so easy for Delgado to come get that, but that's, a, that's the right idea for Portland. There's Delgado, good look at the 5'7". Grad student out of California. Transfer out of Northridge. Game has slowed down a little bit. Pilots with the lead. Both teams, one shot on goal apiece. The one from Portland resulting in Togi Eye's beauty. But aside from that, Delgado not really tested at this point, Ange. And it's so interesting, you know, Togi, I'm thinking about, you know, the goals that she scored this season and even the ones last season, they come from nowhere for her. It's it's amazing that most of the goal calls for, for Kaylee Togi, I, we've been talking about something else. She's running up against three players. I'm talking because I don't think she's going <laughs> to shoot the ball and I really should know better and be quiet because it, she just manages to, to pull a great, terrific shot out of her back pocket. Um, and, and do something brilliant. Well, you're not kidding. That was a magic trick there moments ago. Norman coming off her weak side. Really great help defense by the youngster. But here's LMU keeping the ball in their offensive third. Christensen looking for help. Tight quarters. Lone chart. Another freshman, Kate Howes. Michelle French really utilizing her bench here, subbing out these players into the attack, giving them, uh, giving the, the players on the bench a lot of quality minutes against this team. And this is how, this is how you develop a program. It's a one nothing lead. There's about five minutes left in the half. There's about ten minutes left in the half. And you have to, if you want these players to be able to step up for you in the future, you have to give them opportunities now to play big minutes in a big game. And and a lot of people may not consider this because of the opponent, but I think LMU, you can't discount. These are big minutes in a big game. They are very capable of coming and doing something and getting an equalizer against this Portland team. Yeah, there's, there's no way you approach it any differently than that, Ange. No, no doubt about it. The pilot's looking a little disjointed right now, late in this first half. Free kick coming up, though, for the hometown pilots. Hoffman's whistling the, the first foul there, not, not the second one. Okay. They're pulling it back a little bit wider from where that initially happened. Wilson senior but the transfer out of EWU Eastern Washington so playing into the system oh boy ooh Katana Norman how about Norman so good at just trying to find those opportunities and remember Delgado only stands 5-7 and this looked that, like it had top shelf and you know, that's an initially an opportunity that she was probably trying to put in for Settle or Miller, but then saw where Delgado was and said, hey, I'm just going to maybe try to get something. And if it 
that can hit it just right, either it's going to go off the crossbar or it's going to be a pretty difficult one for Delgado to get to. I wonder if Delgado might have been a little surprised by that. Forty-third minute, one nothing pilots. Both teams liberally substituting. Cutting cutting back is settle. Looking for a little help and she'll get it. Low line drive, like the idea. Well that was headed right for the head of Brooke Miller. But for uh, Alice Santon there. Just cutting that out. Save the day, did Santon. LMU looking to counter. Nicely played, Wilson. Ash has second thoughts and gives it up. There's the turn and for Perez. Has no help, but she continues to carry Perez. Portland doing better to show for that back line off the ball, but right when it gets into the middle, Portland needs to do a better job of keeping that ball. There's some opportunities in transition to go right away, but you've got to be sure that whoever you're playing the ball up to is going to be able to run onto that. Otherwise, you know, Shea Adams winning the ball there and playing it into Dr. Yakel, that's just a, a wasted opportunity. They have to look for those opportunities to keep that ball by, while bypassing those uh, central midfield and back lines. Final seconds of the first half. Pilots looking to be in pretty good shape to go into the break with the one nothing lead. Paul still up for grabs. Whoa. So you can hear the PA announcer counting down the last five seconds. And that'll do it for the first half. The Pilots leading 1-0. Kaylee Togiai's goal in the 19th minute. The difference at this moment. Togiai's third goal of the season was a beauty to beat multiple defenders and keeper Amanda Delgado. So it's 1-0. Pilots at half kind of a back and forth affair that was not full of momentum or exciting plays, but you look at scoreboard and you say, hey, if I'm a Pilot fan, I'm feeling okay at the moment. Still a long way to go. So halftime commences. We'll take some breaks and be back in just a second. So glad to have everybody joining us here at Merlot Field. WCC opener for the Pilots and LMU. Pilots leading it 1-0 at the half.
I love the fact that higher education can be transformative. It can change someone's trajectory of their life. So it's my hope that the University of Portland, we are the transformative Catholic University in the West Coast. I was born and raised in the great state of New Jersey. I am the youngest person in my family. I have some amazing parents who have sacrificed a lot to provide an education for me and my brother. You know, they, we grew up knowing you're going to get your education, you're going to go to church, and anything is possible as you go forward in your life. My name is Rob Kelly, and I am the president of the University of Portland. We were simply thrilled when Dr. Kelly accepted the opportunity to come to the University of Portland. We spent hours, weeks, months discerning this important decision, and he was exactly what this university needs moving forward. I think you've already seen that on campus already. Dr. Kelly's everywhere. He's ubiquitous. Uh, he's energetic. I think he's a tremendous role model. His experience in higher education at this university and other universities will serve him so very well. There's no one more prepared to lead this university into its next great chapter here in the Bluff. What? This is my first day with lots of students on campus in a, in a physical format. The students are back, and this is the beginning of it. It's like Christmas morning. Clearly a person that was able to build connections and relationships with people. His prior experiences, it was very intentional that Rob was preparing himself to one day hopefully have the opportunity to lead a Catholic university, and I'm grateful that he chose us as much as we chose him. I've been so blessed to know him for over 24 years, and one of the very first conversations we had, we found out we both loved higher ed, and he talked about, I want to be a college president one day, and it really struck me because my father was a college president, and so I saw a lot of similarities in somebody that I, you know, greatly admire and love more than anything. He is like the cheerleader for our family. My children, Alex and Addison, first they ground me completely. They give all of this work that I'm doing um, and everything meaning. To be such a collaborator, communicator, and somebody that really deeply believes in justice, it seemed like those were the things that he just naturally is. I have been extremely blessed to have different people in my life. People like Sister Frances, she was my fourth grade school teacher. I remember those little lessons that she taught us, and I bring that with me into the work that I do now. My message to students would be that they're loved want to walk with them and accompany them as they go off and do amazing things in the world. And we're always going to be there. It's about community, and we're going to help them to get connected as we go forward in life. Welcome home, and go Pirates. Dr. Kelly, on behalf of the entire Board of Regents, we are thrilled that you are finally here on the Bluff. Dr. Kelly and his family, so grateful that you've become a part of the University of Portland. Can't wait to see all the fantastic things that we can accomplish. Welcome, Dr. Kelly, to Villa Maria Hall. Welcome, Dr. Kelly, to the University of Portland. We're so proud of you and wish you the best of luck at the University of Portland. Congrats, Dad, on becoming president. I'm really proud of you. Every day, remember where your strength lies. God and heaven are below our feet and above our heads, and so always look up and remember that you are loved, and you can do this. Congratulations. Congratulations, President Kelly. God bless you.
here at Merlot Field. LMU congregating near the middle of the pitch. They trail 18th ranked Portland, 1-0. At the break, we're at halftime and the second half just about five minutes from kicking off. And shots, Angela Harrison, so glad to have you with us tonight, spending your weekend with us. <laughs> And interesting match, uh, kind of a grind, huh? It, it absolutely has been a grind, but I think that that's where, the way LMU prefers it. You know, they're so disciplined. We knew that coming in, looking at their games, looking at their results, seeing how stingy they've been defensively, you know, only conceding three three times before tonight. And so we knew that they're going to be disciplined, and, and we were going to have to see Portland try to break, break down a very uh, – cohesive tight back line and and that's really what we've been looking for all night you know the lions have only scored five goals all season long but they've had a couple of opportunities tonight to get on the board and some really good good looks too where mm. they've just kind of caught portland out just thinking a little bit too much about their attack and that's really where Port where lmu is going to capitalize against portland is uh similar to how portland did here look at togi one two three four five six seven players wow. in front of her plus the goalkeeper and that is just a sheer moment of brilliance from her to just say why not there wasn't really anybody for her to pass to or go to so yeah why not take the shot but this is where um lmu is going to thrive is that after they get the ball here delgado will key them on a counter and hope that they get an opportunity like this that their players can capitalize on a, a free kick a set piece from distance um and what lmu is going to try to hope is that you know portland doesn't do something like this on them have something like that going them delgado safe hands keeps it in front of the goal line there from katana norman but you know really that's what it's going to take for portland they have to look to be uh have a little bit more quicker in the attack in the final third and look for something off of a one two versus you know relying on kaylee togi i like that so the pilots will come back onto the pitch any minute obviously michelle french giving them some instructions in terms of adjustment chris shamadies talking to his players right now on the pitch one nothing 18th ranked portland leading lmu halftime ready to start when we come back from break gorgeous night for soccer here at merlot field we're glad to have you with us second half just around the corner
looking at the pilots as they huddle and ready for the start of the second half. Number 18 in the country are these Portland pilots and they lead LMU 1-0 here at Merlot Field. It's the conference opener for both clubs. Ange, how do the pilots get Sawan a little bit more involved? I mean, obviously, she's the target of a lot of defenses, but how do you get her unlocked? Well, I talked about it in the opening minutes of this game, and we saw what happened when Camille Ash got forward. You you have to allow Sawan to stay forward, and right now Sawan has such a, an obligation to go get the ball, to go find it. She's dropping very deep off the back line to try to come find the ball, and then that you know leaves her in the middle of the field looking to go forward, and she really, Portland really wants her in that back line. So can Norman, can Ash get up? Can Yakel, what can Yakel and Doctor do to support the play to allow Sawan to stay high in that position. Here's a good look at number 14, Nydia Sawan, the sophomore out of Beaverton, hometown kids staying home. Leads this club with the four goals. Back in the starting lineup. Glad to see that. Good look at Bree Norris. Her and Delgado have been having a, a back and forth in terms of, you know, their their goals against average, goals against shutouts in the WCC leaderboards, and it's been a great uh, duel between these two. Both both players very critical in, in keeping their team's records the way they are. Second half underway. Norris having only conceded the three goals. Delgado with that same mark until Togiai beat her in the 19th minute. Temperature mid 70s, a light breeze out of the north, northeast. Just a gorgeous night for WCC women's soccer. Norman thought she had escaped Halliday, but here comes LMU on the counter. Lone chart. Interesting deflection. Norris reads it and gets rid of it quickly. Pilots on the move. LMU already seven players back behind the ball, content to attack with just the two or three going forward, and that, that shot ricocheting off Lucina, uh, falling harmlessly to Norris. But that's really where Portland has to, in transition, get more players up, get more players involved. And that's really where they have to manage and communicate uh, and be on top of things because when you do that, when you again, when you, when you commit players forward, you're always leaving some pockets of space and vulnerabilities behind you. And so Portland just has to really pay attention in their transition game to you know what's going on around them to capitalize on those moments. And Emily Collier, who has the ball starting this second half, I don't believe she played in the first half. She did not play in the first half, and um, really good player for Portland, has always been so strong on the wing, uh, not afraid to get in, and this is, I think, why Frenchie brought her in, is that she's so good on the wing, trying to beat players, get around them, get to the end line, and look for those opportunities. That's where Portland, I think, is going to, if they're going to be able to double their lead, it's going to be coming from a player, um, from Emily Collier, uh, another wing-type player, getting to the end line and getting that ball across the, the penalty area. The veteran out of Salem, Oregon, senior, can play darn near any position Frenchie asks her to play. And I think Frenchie's asked her to play all Every of the positions. <laughs> Except for keeper, right? <laughs> well, you know, we don't know what happens in practice. All right, then. Fair <laughs> enough. Dr. Hustling. <laughs> William Hoffman will whistle that, throw dead. We'll do it again. Definitely uh, took a few liberties with the spotting of that throw. I think <laughs> that ball came up a few too many yards for his liking. Second half just underway. LMU, the visiting Lions coming in undefeated at 2-0 and 6 in their red kits. The Pilots undefeated at 6-0 and 4. Pilots with that 15 RPI, number 18 in the national rankings. What a magical season they've had up and through their non-conference season. Near sideline, Togiai. <laughs> 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 
So yeah, I'll leave it there. And I like this decision. I think Portland needs to do more of this. Drop it back to Norman. Switch the play across the field pretty quickly and see where they can disrupt and see Sawan is that in that high role, they're doing a good job of passing around between center backs, but where they can find those opportunities for Sawan to get through that back line. Settle starting the second half, along with McCord, kind of an interesting starting 11 for the Pilots, and here comes Suwan, where she's so dangerous. Reading it well, Delgado going down to get that one. And that's what I talked about at halftime, just the very quick opportunities, the one-two. Selma Lucina play, turns and plays this ball so quickly into Suwan. LMU barely has time to recover. Suwan looking for that opportunity. Look at her, she knows that's the serve, that's what I want. That's what Portland needs to keep doing, is finding those quick opportunities across that back line for Sawan, for Togiai, and maybe even Settle to break through. So starting the second half for the Pilots, Hannah McCord playing in only her second game of the season. Ruby Settle as well, and Collier, who didn't play at all in the first half, gets the nod to start the second half. Interesting. I think it's exploiting where uh, Portland's strengths are and understanding where LMU's weaknesses are. And I think that's really when Michelle French is looking at the players that she has out there, um, leaving too high. She's gone away from three forward, but leaving too high against these center backs and now looking for Ruby Settle to match up and looking for Keeley Doctor out wide and Emily Collier, Collier to now go up against those outside backs. So now they're playing in a five, a four or five against uh, LMU's four or five. Matching up, what a step. Bella Yakel. Boy, Yakel just, I mean, just stripped that ball and leads the charge. That soft pass isn't going to cut it. And, it. and that's where Portland is going to get, you know, the, as I mentioned in transition, they do so well to win the ball. They have to do better at keeping it in those opportunities. Whoa, what a great ball. And how about the defensive play of Norman? Jesse Halliday was in there, oh. and Norman just managed to get between her and the ball to turn it around. Wow. I mean, otherwise, that's 1v1 against Bree. Check it out. Terrific ball played through here, and Norman just does enough to step and separate Halliday from the ball Ooh. and then turn it around and go the other way. Norman, one of the many freshmen who has impacted this team so much. That is uh, that is textbook 1v1 defending in that situation. That's exactly, exactly how you want to do it. Sawan wins the ball back. Doctor is going to carry. Subtle move. Doctor still. Ooh. Handball called. Yeah, and... Man, did Keeley Doctor go, absolutely go at Lone Char and just get her going the other way. There's Lone Char trailing out the play after Doctor's first move, and right there, it's calling that handball on Genevieve Watkins. As you see, it's just outside the penalty area. Very, very dangerous point here for Portland. They have a number of players who can score here. Just outside the 18, as Ange said. Fire Portland, I'd put somebody on that deeper, deepest player that, that they have there. I think that's um, that's Santon that's sitting on that line. Yeah. Oh, off the crossbar on the rebound. That ball from Sawan hit the wall. And I think the, it was rebound, Collier. the rebound attempt, I think it was Collier too. She just cracks that thing and it hits the hardware. Because Ange, a second goal here really puts LMU, a team that does not score very often, very much, puts them in a hole. Well, and LMU is a team that looks to, again, as I said, get something off the counter, kind of nick something going against the run of play. And when you're two goals down, that's not a position that they've been in as we get another look at this ball from Swan. Yeah, right in there. So that ball just clangs off the crossbar. Wow. It bounces off of Santon, and it was hit so hard that it ricocheted where the pilots had a chance to go up 2-0. It might have been Doctor that actually hit that. Hard to say, but 
either way, Portland, you know, some really good opportunities and they need to keep this pressure on and pressure up. Settle chasing. Lone chart. Norman, heck of a battle. Look at Norman playing the D, Ange. Again, so well, just separates Lone Char from the ball, deals with the physical challenge, and then plays so, so confidently out of it. Togiai into space, nobody there. Fifty fifth minute. One nothing pilots on Togi Eye's goal in the first half, her third of the season. Puts her tied with Nettie Sawan on points for the pilots. There you both go. With nine. You're gonna call that foul on Doctor. Going against Kelsey Wong, I think. So the pilots will retreat, get organized defensively. Another freshman, redshirt freshman. I mean, there's a lot of youngsters on this pilot club. I know we keep mentioning that, but with some savvy veterans, with all these youngsters, the future is really going to be fun for this Portland team. Couldn't agree more. All right, Santon, and she hits a good deep ball. She'll be asked to do that right here. Norris, kind of a floater. She read that well, Ange. Yeah, it does a nice job to hesitate, make sure that she's going to be there. As a goalkeeper, you want to come get those high and a little bit late so that you can still go through them and not try to get there at the, at the highest point of your jump. So she does a nice job of holding, making sure that she can have just that final burst through the ball uh, and no problems there for Bree Norris. Timing is everything, huh? Her goalkeeper, absolutely, you yeah. Bet. Beautiful step, LMU on the counter, on the run, Halliday. Instead, far side, Lone Char. But there's pretty good D by Wilson. Wong pings it. Norman leaves it. Ange, I, I may be overstating it, but right now, defender of the game has got to be with Norton. Maybe the whole back line, but Norton's kind of stealing the show. Norman's doing such a good job of limiting Lone Char's effectiveness. She's going yes. back and forth between Wong, uh, between uh, Lone Char and Kelsey Wong. And again, as Michelle French will talk about, doing a really good job of winning the ball and keeping possession. Toki Ive! So we talk about Norman and the, the, the defense she's playing and Togi High looking for the brace on the other end and she ripped one on that far post. Was wondering if she was waiting for someone on the run or if she was looking to just beat Delgado. That's such a tough angle to shoot from with her left foot there, but didn't necessarily have time to cut it back from her right. Didn't have uh, any players in that advance of a position. I think Settle was the one who was in there at the far post, just trying to get there. But, um, you know, that would have won't be one that Kaylee Togiai in different circumstances probably would have cut that back to her right foot. Very tough to shoot far post uh, in, from that angle. DeMello and Werner checking in for LMU. I hear you on the angle. Boy, that was tough with the left foot, wasn't it? Yeah. Pilots looking for that all-important second goal that would really put this LMU bunch in a hole. We got a long way to go here in the 59th minute. Pilots offense a little more cohesive and clicking this second half. Ooh. Lucina carries. Will she crack it? Lucina deep. Just threw a lot of red jerseys there but can't quite connect. Ange, did you like her carrying it that deep or were you looking maybe for her to unleash a shot? Well, I don't know where, there wasn't really anybody 
anybody where she could shoot to, shoot through. Again, a lot of red jerseys yep. between her and the goal. And not anybody running behind her towards the sideline that she could dish to for a cross. So really did about the best she could do under the circumstances. Um, just, you know, when those things happen as a player, you can't be static. You can't get, start watching your teammate and go, oh, nice job. You're looking good over there. You got to <laughs> you got to put yourself in a position to help them uh, wherever the ball or wherever the play may be taking them. Settle does a nice job. Quick restart for the Pilots. LMU playing good collective defense on Sawan. Well, I mean, we, we've talked about this through so many games and at the start of the season of, you know, Sawan being the one to watch when you're on the WCC all preseason team when you're you know the team's returning leading scorer when you've got four goals you're the leading scorer coming into this game you're gonna draw the attention and when that happens you know this was Sawan's position last year when you're when you're not Nettia Sawan on this team you have to be ready to take up uh, any opportunity that you that you can to score goals and help your team win game like Kaylee Togia did in the first half. Doctor sends one in Delgado off her line you know the last time Sawan was near the 18. There were four jerseys around her wearing red. Just collapses yeah, right on top of you her. You betcha. Well played, Doctor. And she'll carry. On this near sideline is McCord. Doctor gets it right back. Togiai inside the 18. Instead, like the idea. Lucina. Lucina had Sawan into that back post, and now Sawan will dribble in here. And no troubles from Delgado. I'm impressed with how Ruby Settle has played, getting the starting nine in the second half, she's been pretty good. Well, in, in, in that role, you have to be. You have to be such a dynamic player. Portland, again, has switched up their formation. They are three in the back. Camille Ash has come off the field in, in order to make way for Emily Collier out wide and for Portland to be able to make these switches. So, you know, Ruby Settle has to be that linchpin between uh, Bella Yakel and Hannah, McC Hannah McCord and provide that, you see her running off that line, provide that check off that forward line in order to keep Togi Ai and Sawan in advanced positions. Well, the Pilots will sub in. Togiai was looking for some kind of foul to be called on Delgado as Rowe and Miller check back in. Delgado way off her line on that last play. Into space, Rowe sends it right back to Doctor. Pilots will keep it via the throw and they're attacking third deep in LMU territory. Smartly played row. Like that idea. Ooh. Santin comes through yes. big there for the Lions. She's had a couple of really good efforts via the defensive heading out of harm's way. Doesn't take long of watching this LMU team to, to understand that she is the linchpin for this back line. She is the centermost player of the back five and is the one that manages things effectively and has to deal with things like the, the flighted balls in, in through the penalty area. So a short corner for the Pilots. Flag goes up as LMU wants to send three subs in. They'll get the go ahead soon, but it'll be a Portland throw. They're letting him play. 
Yeah, they are. And, and right now you can hear Michelle French urging Colby Wilson to get forward. There's no need for her to be sitting back. It's her, Adams, and Norman in a back three right now, and they want Colby Wilson to get forward, add another player into the attack, really give LMU some problems in trying to figure out who is supposed to mark uh, who in, in this back third. So Wilson following the instructions, getting forward. Pilots making things interesting. Mm. Ricochet right to Delgado. LMU looking for the equalizer. Wonderful step. Wow. Again, it's Norman. Wow. Lucina looking for the runner and finds Miller. Miller dispossessed. She'll get it right back. Miller looking, trying to keep it out. Keep it rolling on the end line. Thought she was going to get the corner there yeah. in LMU. Manages to, to nick it off her foot at some point. As we see here, she's just trying to shield it out. That ball's going to be out off LMU. And right there, that's where she ends up knocking out of bounds. Miller potentially looking for the foul from Genevieve Watkins, but center referee William Hoffman whistles for the goal kick instead. Christensen, Murphy. Checking back in for this LMU bunch. Number nine, Janessa Groves. Yeah, also Groves back, back in. in. Yep. She's been really, really good for this LMU team. So she's back on the pitch. Well, we're through the first 20 minutes of the half, and, and now we're seeing some players come back in for LMU to really push in for the next 15, 20 minutes for LMU. The Portland's had the better run of play through this uh, first part of the second half. And so now, uh, you know, these players are going to come back in, hopefully trying to key a bit of a counterattack when they win it. Lucina. Get it right back. 66th minute. Togi Eye's goal in the first half. The difference in this match. We expected a low-scoring game. We're seeing just that. Doctor's been very active this second half. Settle. Doctor again flagging it down. Collier, I believe that's Collier out there, whistle for the offside. And that was a remarkable run of possession in there for Portland. Some really good opportunities in and around, keyed by a really good layoff from MJ Rowe. MJ Rowe checking off the back line and just subtly gets her foot turned, has her body going one way, leaves the ball for Collier going the other way. And Collier hits a really nice ball across. Portland had a couple of good chances there. And Portland, again, just needs to be patient in the at that attack. No need to rush anything. Um, in order to try to get another goal, they can they can continue to afford to be patient in what they're doing uh, and try to catch LMU as they start to push numbers forward looking for an equalizer. Interesting here, DeMello. Norman tries to deny, DeMello turns and into space, nobody there. A little heavy on that touch. MJ Rowe, yeah, just couldn't bend it down the line for Miller. If there was anybody who on this pitch who was going to catch up with that ball, it was Brooke Miller. Uh -huh. So conference opener for both clubs. Up next for the Pilots will be San Diego. That's on the road, and then Pepperdine in town. That'll be a huge match on October 8th. It'll be a return to a two-game weekend for the Pilots, but a, a split. You know, they'll be down on the road 
for San Diego on on Friday it looks like and then and then back against Pepperdine here at Merlot on Sunday so always a tough weekend on those on those travel draws like that but um, something that again if you're going to be a top level program you've got to be able to manage those circumstances. LMU has Santa Clara next then at St. Mary's University of San Diego at Gonzaga. You see Lucina there coming through. Not sure where Hoffman's calling the foul there. Maybe thinking it's dangerous play. Lucina coming through thinking she's playing on the ground, but there wasn't anybody too close to her while that was happening. So Santon with the line drive. Nothing LMU can really work with. And here's MJ Rowe. We've seen this dropping so deep. That's a position that you want to see Emily Collier in. Maybe Kaylee Togiai. Uh, uh, Colby Wilson so that Rowe can be up and be a threat against this LMU back line. Don't necessarily want MJ Rowe dropping that deep. Lions looking for the equalizer. Counter. Miller. And she does cover a lot of ground with a lot of pace. Pilots offense sputtering a bit. And the LMU defense has a lot to do with that here in the 70th minute. There's the whistle blown. Lucina goes down. It'll be a free kick for the Pilots. And as the clock continues to favor Portland, you see the foul. A second goal by the Pilots, Ange, would be massive here at yeah. this stage of the game. Yeah, Madison Warner just runs Lucina to ground there. She's trying to get that. Togiai. That gives Portland a great opportunity. And, and again, that's something I talked about. These are where their best chances are going to be from these set piece opportunities where they can be clever like that. They can have Kaylee Togiai, and we've seen her do that, dribble in at the corner of the yeah. penalty area and hit a great, great shot. Um, and, you know, the other really good opportunity that they had from Sawan, just the one-two passing where they're able to just get in through the back line. Not a lot of long balls that they have to run and catch up to. Port LMU's defense and their back line is too good for that. They, they are way too disciplined uh, to mishandle any situation like that. So Portland really has to do a better job of playing through the back line, not trying to play over them. Wong and Turner onto the pitch for the Pilots. Seventy second minute. Off the head of Doctor. Yakel looks up and heads up. Counter Lions. Smartly played. A late whistle. Foul's going to go against the pilots. And Togi, I restart. It's a quick one for LMU, trying to catch the pilots napping. Portland's defense has been awfully good tonight. And it's amazing, you know, again, the, the halftime talk, the switch of formation. Um, right now, Shea Adams and Camille Ash, two of Portland's best best uh, backs in the back line off the field in this three back. Bella Yakel has dropped in as the center back with Norman and Wilson flanking her to leave uh, McCord and uh, Lucina in front of her, trying to just again key this attack when they win the ball, can they keep it going forward? 
It's an interesting switch uh, it's, for it's, the pilots. It's not something we've seen at any point this season. Okay. So Michelle French always has a few ideas up her sleeve um, to handle these circumstances. One of the few times that Norman has gotten beat, DeMello was able to get the offense going. And Dr. Whistle wow. through the foul there. That's a surprising call against Amber McCorkle. That was a pretty good matchup between the two of them. McCorkle does a nice job of, of getting Doctor into that 1v1. Thought Doctor had come through cleanly with that, but looks like Hoffman saw something in the shoulder to shoulder. So Marshall will place it down. 74th minute. LMU looking for the equalizer. That's a great ball. Ooh. That far post was dangerously open for Smidgen, but it was wide. But it was confidently dealt with by Norris as that ball went through. She knew as that ball was coming down, that ball wasn't headed anywhere close to the goal. So you see her just play it safe, hold it back, and, and no need to go out for that. Bowman in for the pilots. Lone Char, Perez returning to the lineup. Halliday in for LMU as well. Palace have got something going here. Turner's going to leave it. Great pass into space. You hear the whistle, the flag goes up. Turner just getting ahead of the play a tiny bit. Pilots again using that far flank. Could this be where they put this thing to bed? Wong deals with it so well out there. Lucina. Ooh, like the idea there. Better passing for the pilots in tight spaces there, Ange. I couldn't agree more. That was exactly what Portland needs to do. These are those these are the opportunities for them that they'll have to try to exploit. And they just frankly need to create more of those opportunities again instead of, of, of trying to go high and wide. Seventy-seventh minute. The Portland Pilots trying to win their conference opener, trying to stay undefeated through eleven games. The last time that has happened, where they were undefeated through eleven games, was back in two thousand and five, a year they won the national championship. Holiday earns the first booking of the game for that challenge. Just comes through high with her cleat showing. And um, not, a, not a difficult call for Hoffman there. Norman. Unlucky there for LMU as Bowman will carry and then give it up to Turner. Little cross. One thing Portland has done very well at is just pinning LMU in their own half for most of this second half. They haven't been able to generate a ton of opportunities 
in on goal. Very few corners, a few more shots than they had in the first half. But when they are in this half, they manage to keep LMU in this half and don't let them out of that. And that's really when you're trying to close out a game and you're trying to do uh, all the things that you need to do to be successful as a team. It's, it's that. It's making sure that at the very minimum you are harassing and staying disciplined to keep the team uh, in their own half and keep yourself on the front foot of the attack. You know, I had a quick chat with, with Frenchie earlier, and she said one of our keys, she's reading your mind, keep LMU in their defensive half, possess the ball, take the pressure off, pressure off our defense, and keep them locked and loaded in the defensive area. Well done, Ange. I mean... <laughs> Come on. As I said earlier, I got to play with her. So then we felt like we learned a lot of the same things. Ooh. Doctor was right there. Tried to punch that header over Delgado. And offside called at some point. Not sure if it was off the punch or where the offside came from, but this is a terrific ball from Kaylee Togia. He plays it in just a nice, dangerous area. And you see what a nice job uh, Eliana Wong does getting in front of that and keeping it going. Ooh. <laughs> the crowd senses things happening when Togiai has the ball <laughs> at her foot. Get the feeling if Kaylee Togiai thought she could, she would she would turn and shoot from the halfway <laughs> line. Ash waiting to come in. You can see where where Portland is going with this. Ash dropping into the back line. Togiai coming off the field. Um, going for a bit more of that defensive presence with Ash coming into that center back position. Wong's going to drop back into that right back position. She's going to do what Emily, Emily Collier was doing in the first half, or in the first part of this half, which is kind of double duty as the outside back, outside mid going forward. And um, Belly Yackel's going to go back up into the middle of the field and try to lock that down for Portland. So in the 80th minute, the clock obviously favoring the Portland Pilots with the one goal lead. Christensen back on the pitch, by the way, for LMU. Watch those soft passes. Bowman going for the ambitious pass there, trying to just play it up, up and over that back line and doesn't end up, um, end up getting it, but ends up getting the throw in instead. Bowman double teamed. Quick throw from Norman, who has been terrific tonight. The squibber won by LMU. Nice tackle. And that sets up Lucina. Lucina inside the 18. Lucina. Oh! It was a great service. Bella Yakel and Yakel almost connects cleanly with it. Would have been her first goal, but man, what great defending here from Portland as we see Bowman just slide, step up, get a good tackle, slide that through, and then Lucina off and running. Kind of dances her way through here, does a nice job to keep hold of it, and then finds that opportunity in Bella Yakel. Of course, she wanted would've that been a, volley. Would have been a great first goal. Yep. Would have been a great first career goal. Terrific service. And that goal would have really put LMU into the kind of hole they don't usually crawl out of. So the pilot's still keeping the heat on, Ange. Rose going to send it back. Here's Norman on this near sideline. Nice pick, Murphy. LMU looking for the counter, 82nd minute. Jessica Bowman takes one for the team there oh, off the shoulder. Sure, nice job. Did. She's had a nice shift. 
I mean, she was brought in, I think, a lot for her ability in transition, but that, and it's really that defending to attack transition. She does a good job of putting herself in areas where she can win the ball, disrupting LMU when they're trying to get some, some kind of rhythm in their attack. And when she wins it, she always does something pretty good with it. She's been really good at that, of trying to find a teammate or connect at some point and deal with it. So, yeah, great shift so far from, from Bowman. Frenchie talks about the depth. She says it's the most depth we've had since I've taken the head coaching job. You know, healthy competition and practice, folks earning minutes on the pitch. The depth really has been a difference maker tonight. And it's really, I think, the most players that we've seen Portland use in a game in a long time, maybe this season, with uh, Kate Howes coming and playing in the field with Bowman coming and playing with Collier playing. I mean, a lot of players of faces that we see in the second half that we didn't see in the first half. Foul is going to be whistled against Lucina. At this point, eight subs used by Michelle French in this match against LMU. We're in the 84th minute. Sarah Murphy, who was fouled there. Lucina just came in from an angle from behind her, and that's what the foul that Hoffman saw was. So Santon again will be asked to deliver the goods on the free kick for LMU. Four Lions waiting to check in. Bowman earns a yellow card for ah. being a bit too close to the ball there. Hmm, okay. Norris again, huh? Yeah. Times it again so well. You see her just wait, hesitate just a second. She doesn't need to get right underneath the ball right away. She needs to be in a position to attack it and come through it cleanly. That's the best chance you have when you're under pressure to hold on to it. And that's what Portland needed her to do was hold on to it so that uh, they could get up the field. Norris, one of the better keepers in the conference. Just showing her smarts tonight as much as anything. Smarts and timing, athleticism, but just kind of keeping everything nice and calm with her defenders playing so well in front of her. Wong back on the pitch. Groves back on the pitch. McCorkle for LMU. It's such a it's such a circle of life relationship between the goalkeeper and the back line. You really are one <laughs> one unit in it. You know, when you are in that back line, when you've got a goalkeeper who's playing well, who know you know if you if you make a mistake, they're they're gonna bail you out and, and with a big save or they're gonna come through and clean it up for you. And as a goalkeeper, you know, you're gonna work hard. You know that your the people in front of you are are making those opportunities very few and far between. And when they're stepping up and blocking shots and you see them putting their body on the line, getting in front of the ball, doing whatever they can to stop the attack, it makes it easy for you as a goalkeeper to, to step up and do your job as well. What, do you, what have you learned about uh, Norris, who obviously had a really solid freshman campaign, sophomore season, uh, she's been even better. What have you learned about her? Uh, I mean, I, th I, th I think that she is a player that just wants to get better every game, and she's going to come out and do whatever it takes to help her team. I mean, when she got that red card against uh, against UW, the, the reaction just absolutely gutted. Just can't believe that, you know, that um, – that she got that call. I don't think anybody, I certainly I couldn't believe it, but um, you know, what she wants to do is then, you know, she turns around, she could go sulk for the next two weeks because she's out, but she goes and makes sure that Abby Presnell before she comes on the field is ready to play. And then the following week, Cadence Rutledge, are you ready to go? What do I need to do in training to make sure that uh, everybody is as confident as they need to be if I can't play? So she's just a, a tremendous asset as a teammate uh, and a leader for this back line. And just a sophomore, you're describing a, a senior with yeah. that kind of uh, deportment. That's yeah. impressive. And I think that that is a lot of credit also to assistant coach and goalkeeper coach Maite Zabala. Maite has had her eye on Bree since Bree was a young player and, you know, really made sure that when Norris came in, you know, she was nurtured. You know, Norris was likely going to be the starter as a freshman, but she had to earn it. And she made sure that Norris has earned it week in and week out and that nothing is given to her. And, and that's one thing that Norris has taken away. And that's a lot of credit to Zabala for setting that standard for Norris um, 
to, to reach every week and so that every every goalkeeper in that unit in the four goalkeepers of the of the GK Union for the pilots knows that you know nothing is nothing's given it's earned savvy play there by Norris as she knows the clock is definitely in the pilots favor one nothing Portland looking to slam the door on Togiai's goal in the 19th minute. Michelle French has played with formations, played with lineups, combinations, been very creative. Well played, Bowman will push. Ooh. Bowman trying to get the corner shoved down. That's such great work from Bowman. She saw, I think, uh, Doctor stepping up to win that ball. And as Doctor was sliding over, Bowman just took off down the sideline, wanted to make sure she was in the right pass for Doctor. Uh, again, it's all about setting your teammates up for success and making it easy for them to get the ball to you. And, and Jessica Bowman did just that. So the pilots just a couple of minutes away from ensuring that after the men won last night that they take care of their end of the deal with a victory tonight, which would mean that they would remain the one and only school with undefeated programs on both the men's and women's side. A lot can happen in the last couple of minutes, but if you're a pilot fan, you're liking the score in the 89th minute, one nothing Portland. And you see just how difficult uh, LMU has been to beat this season, you know, they've, and, and score on. It's been very, very hard for teams to go up against this team um, and not just score, but win a game. And Portland, again, as you're trying to establish yourself as a, as a perennial power in the top 20 and potentially move it even into the top 10, you've got to find a way again to win against these teams that will sit in defensively, that are so disciplined defensively, and again, aren't, aren't scared of, of what the histo history says about when you have played each other. And so Portland doing just that tonight. So the Pilots coming into this match ranked 18th. Michelle French not wanting to talk about that ranking, saying nothing to see here. She's been saying that all year. Pay no attention to us. Move along. We don't want to talk about that kind of thing, but we'll talk about it. This has been a resurgence for the Portland Pilots, and it's been wonderful to see. Bowman again heading right to that corner. LMU dispossesses. MJ Rowe, nice cleanup job coming in behind her. That's just smart play right there. Lucina does a good job. That's, that ball's likely going to go out of play, and it's going to be several seconds before LM LMU can get it back in. Final seconds. <laughs> You know, Ange, you gotta win ugly too. And this real I wouldn't even say ugly. That's not fair. This was just you knew what LMU was coming and you had to win competently. Yeah, Portland prepared itself beautifully for an LMU club. And the result speaks for itself. One nothing pilots. And a huge sigh of release here from uh, head coach Michelle French and her coaching staff as they come through this line, handing LMU their first loss of yep. the season. That's just, you know, LMU's been so difficult to play against and defend for so many programs. And Portland, the first team that's been able to, uh, to knock them off. So it's a victory for 18th ranked Portland, outlasting a very gritty game blue collar LMU club won nothing and it's and it was an and it was an entire team effort again you see how many players that Michelle French could utilize it wasn't that she had to utilize them she could utilize so many players off the bench to help this again truly be a team win everybody in this team contributed to Portland remaining unbeaten tonight yep the unbeaten streak is alive pilots win their conference opener for Angela Harrison our wonderful broadcast crew I'm Ann saying so long from the bluff have a great rest of your weekend. Stay healthy and stay safe.
Portland Pilot president, Robert Kelly, congratulating Portland Pilot head coach, Michelle French, here at Merlot Field on the campus of the University of Portland. The pilots recovering already and very satisfied Angela Harrison with the one nothing victory over an LMU club that gave Portland all it could handle. All it could handle and more. I mean, so tough to break down. And, you know, Michelle French did a really nice job getting congrats there again from uh, our new, our 21st university president here at the University of Portland and uh, does just such a nice job at halftime of making the adjustments seeing you know Portland doesn't need an extra defender in the back and a back four let's send that player up the field three in the back and and really that was so critical to them getting more opportunities throughout the second half innovative stuff from Frenchie but let's look at uh, some first half highlights and that goal from Togi <laughs> that, that's gonna hit her highlight reel for the ages I mean just a moment of brilliance there so many players plus the goalkeeper between her and the goal but it doesn't matter to her she just is so clever when it comes to managing those shots from outside the penalty area but man Katana Norman who was monster defensively in the second half almost catches Delgado out and would be the first team to put two goals on this LMU team Sawan had a really good opportunity there didn't have much pace on it though but that was the kind of efforts that Portland needed and you see Sawan there get that ball right off the wall there and it clangs around for a little bit and you see just so much different opportunities happens gets Delgado coming the one way and then man off the crossbar that would have been a great goal to to see this game out but Togi gets one more look at the goal before being subbed off the field and um, here LMU Tries to get themselves coming back the other way, but Jessica Bowman comes on the field, says no way. <laughs> Plays it right through to Lucina, and Lucina does a really good job here. Under pressure, just holding the ball up, kind of dancing around a few players, and then tries trying to find something and create something. And, and that that was Bella Yakel who almost had her first career goal. But the scoreboard says 1-0, 18th-ranked Portland outlasting LMU. You knew the Lions were going to come with all defense, and the Pilots used the one goal from Togiai. That's all they needed because, truth be told, Portland's defense pretty darn good as well. They were terrific, and, and again, even switching out, it just shows the work that French has done. There she's talking to, uh, for me, the player of the game, yes. Katana Norman, did so well. Um, but they, they moved seamlessly from four in the back to three in the back, and they looked like they've been playing that for years and you know did so well to protect their goal limit the opportunities for Bree Norris but even you know the chances that did come Norris's way no problems for her to clean those up all right let's look at some stats anything jump out at you partner I mean I think just the shots and the shots on goal when we were looking at this at halftime you know LMU was up three to two on shots and I think again you see what that switch of formation did for Portland they pinned LMU in their own half they came in and they generated so many more opportunities and really there wasn't anywhere LMU could go uh, out of their own half Frenchie really coached this one to a T, didn't she? I mean, from the formation management to the player management, yep. just the number of players coming off the bench in different uh, formations, in different locations, in different opportunities. Um, it just heck of a job there from, from Frenchie and staff. All right, it's October. It's conference time. Let's take a look at the pilots' upcoming schedule. You know, they'll head, this will be their first again, as I mentioned earlier, their first two-game weekend in a while. They'll go on the road to San Diego and then turn around and come back and play uh, Pepperdine, who's the only other WCC team that's ranked right now on the Sunday. But as I said, you've got to you've got to take those chances. Uh, and and if you're going to be a top 10 team, you've got to deal with a schedule like that and still be able to come out on top. And then you'll see them at uh, BYU in St. Mary's, who drew today. So who's anybody's guess on those games? So here we go. It's conference time. But a big win for the Pilots tonight. 18th ranked Portland defeating LMU one to nothing. Pilots unbeaten through 11 games for the first time since 2005. That's the year they won that national championship. Good night from Merlot, everybody.